Welcome to the Becker County Historical Society Museum Road. Today we come to you from the museum and we're standing by our World Wars and Army, etc. Uh, display. And I have with me today Arlen Wisted, who had the wonderful experience of being in Burma. And so I'm going to let him tell you about it. Well, First of all, I'm going to uh, announce that the 115 Meter Maintenance Company was situated in Bamo, Burma. That's where they were when I joined them in about March of 1945. And after the first about a month, then we were given orders to move the entire company to Luchao, China, which is about two, three hundred miles south and east of Kunming, China. So first of all, they had to fly us from Bamo to Lido, India, which was a big supply depot, to pick up our trucks. And then we convoyed them back to Bamo to uh, load up our entire company and move on to New Chow, China. And the way a convoy worked, we had about 100 units, plus or minus, and divided into four serials, A, B, C, and D. And I was in charge of the D serial. So I drove the last truck in the convoy, excepting the two wrecker trucks, which followed up the rear in order to pick up any delinquent trucks that were broke down. And going over the Lido Road, which was built from Lido, India, to Lashio, Burma, and the Burma Road was built from Kunming, China, to Lashio, Burma, and they joined there. Well, going down the leader road, which is so rough, it was hard on vehicles. And the Japs sprinkled plenty of nails and other debris in the road so that when you come in at night, you have plenty of <laughs> flat tires to fix. And I got to be an expert. Well, you were the mechanic, weren't you? <laughs> you had to be one. Oh, okay. I was a small arms mechanic, not truck. But anyway, each driver is, was in charge of his own vehicle. So at the end of the day, when you came in, you serviced your own truck, you fixed your own tires, if you had a flat, and I had a lot of them, always on the inside dual. So I had to of take course. off a whole tire before I could even get at it. You gassed your truck up, oils, and checked your water so it was ready to go for the next day before you could go to bed. Well, then you set up your, your uh, cot and your mosquito bar, and then you slept for the night and ready for the next morning. Well, this. Then some of the run into the monsoon, into the monsoon weather. So one morning we got up, and all you could see from one end to the other, the convoy stopped with water, six or eight inches deep. So that held us up for a day until oh. that receded, and we had to get fed and get our truck service and one thing or another. And then you come to a bridge. Well, the bridge has a sign there. It tells you what the limit of the weight I can go across at one time. Small trucks continuously, your larger trucks one at a time. So that holds up everything. Everybody's got to stay until that truck's going, and the next one, and the next one. Well, you got about 100 units, and you're averaging about seven miles an hour when, when you're climbing, because uh, the Army regulations were that whatever gear you use to climb the incline, you use the same gear to go down, so you use your engine as a brake okay. to help you. You were in the mountains then, oh, in the yes. northern part. Oh, boy, you've been climbing. They had some grades as much as 17% grade, which okay. almost be about a 25 to 35 degree angle. Oh. They had to crawl up. And then they put a, they put a uh, trailer full of grapefruit juice behind me, so I had to pull that, too. And that was <laughs> an awful drag going up those grades. <laughs> well, I have to just say, going across these rivers on these bridges, you know, I have these bamboo mines, you know, oh, well, in my mind. Um, well, were they good bridges? Oh yeah, the two of them were oh, okay. over the Saloween River and the uh, and the Mekong River were okay. were regular steel suspension oh. bridges, but they had load limits on them. Sure. And the other ones that we went were just plain pontoons. You just crossed. Had a plain pontoon that you drove a vehicle on, 
They had a crank on each side of the river, and you stood there and you cranked the vehicle across. And then when that one got across, you cranked it back because you had a crank on both ends. You can crank it back again and put another vehicle on, and then you crank that across. So that took about 100 units. You know, that took all day and probably sometimes a whole night before you got all them over. <laughs> and uh, then some of the other bridges that we went across that we didn't get very far, kind of a stick bridge. That's what I was afraid of. Underneath. Oh. And we got about 25 units across, and then down they went. Through the through the bridge and down to the bottom. Well, that happened about mid afternoon. So then we had to wait until we got the two big records that we had one four ton diamond fee and a ten ton American La France records. So we had to wait until they caught up to us, strip them down, and then get the records across to use the big record to pull the rest of the units across two or three at a time oh with my. the winch. And those winches are slow when you couple them up. My goodness, you and know, we're just about out of time this, <laughs> this round, but we want to hear more about this story. I want to know how long this road was and how long it took you to get across on the road. So we will be back later for more on the Burma Road. All right, thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you.